Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a laptop here. Top Osh? Huh? Or is it too posh? I don't know. <laughs> of course I've particularly heard of that brand before, but I'm not much of an expert in that respect on laptops. Yeah. Let's see. So from what he says is it I think it doesn't charge or the charging light comes on and goes off, but it doesn't work, something like that. I don't have a charger with this, so this is saying DC 12 volts in. Uh, 12 volts. You do wonder if somebody's connected it to the wrong power supply. Maybe. I think I'll connect this to my bench supply. I'm pretty sure I have a jack connector that will fit into there. Yeah, I have this in my little tub of various coaxial power connectors. It fits. Let's see. And if that fails, I have this thing I can solder some wires onto. Okay. Well, good job I checked the polarity. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't quite sure which way around it was on this one. Yeah, 12 volts. This does show positive to the center. Let's see. Of course, the advantage of this as well is we can look at the current meters on the bench power supply at the same time. Okay, there we have it. Let's plug this in and let's see what it does. Well, first of all, oh yes, it draws some power. Uh, and it goes off again. That's kind of like what he says it does. I'm just looking for some uh, lights. There are some here. I don't see anything lighting up. Okay, then it goes off again. I wonder if this is just one of those where the SIO is kind of like a bit screwed up, or rather the EC, and just removing the battery will make it work. Okay, let's have a look. Somebody's obviously been inside here before. That's the first thing I noticed. So this could be somebody else's mess. Okay guys, so just the screws all the way around. This one was actually missing in the corner. What was interesting, and I forgot to hit record, my fault, but all the screws here were loose. I mean, even just putting this in and just turning, there was no tension on any of them. It's all been loosened. But this one, which was the warranty seal, was intact and it didn't even easily peel back. I've broken it now, but that seal was still over. It's like somebody's tried to open this. You can see where they've been basically like weaving at this edge because can you see that is like distorted a little bit there. But if you just take that screw out as well, it comes off easily just from where they'd split it on this side. Okay, it came off, clipped off, but easily. I had to take the SSD out first, by the way, there it is, 240 gig. Because I, a quonion, <laughs> it's like an onion, but with a Q, a quonion, yeah, a quonion hard drive. Uh, there are some funny brands of things around these days. So we have that, and I think you can see straight away, we have this, so if you look at the battery, this side is, flat but this side is like all bulged outwards that battery is clearly gone okay the other thing i noticed and so i didn't hit record and i first opened it up this little metal insert just fell out i've pushed it back in now and you can see the plastic is split here so this is where 
they've tried to pry this open, I would say. This one screw was missing. And they've obviously put some force onto this. And all they needed to do was just remove that screw under the bit of paper. So I know Handy Andy doesn't look at these laptops. He just brings them over to me. He's the mobile phone guy. But some amateur has had a go at this. Okay. Hopefully if they had have got it open, they would have spotted that battery is gone. But what I'll try is, I'll just disconnect the battery from the board. And let's see if this will power up without the battery. If it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's something else faulty. I mean, I have seen some laptops that won't power up without the battery attached. Uh, I mean, normally they do, but you never know. So, we can see the power supply again. Let's just get the lead. Let's plug it in and let's see what it does now. Okay, so power on. Doesn't draw any power now. Hit the power button. Okay, so without the battery, just make sure this is pushed in properly. Ah, it's pushed in properly now. You can see the current, yeah? Does it start? No, apparently it doesn't start. Oh, two milliamp. It's going up. Yeah, it's gathering speed. It's gathering pace a little bit. That's gone back to, yeah, back on again. Well, that's interesting because the question is, would it start if the battery was good? Hmm. Uh, Let's see if we can maybe figure that out. Oh, I think we can see actually this is not a good connection on here. Can you see the blue lights come on now? Yeah, I don't have a good connection on this plug. Let me find another one that fits better. Otherwise, that's just going to drive us crazy. Okay, this fits better. Good, the click. <laughs> so, let's see. And I have checked the polarity, by the way, so I know it's right. So touch the power. Let's see what we get. Well, the blue light comes on. Uh, let's see if it will start. Oops, why has come off my little uh, power supply? Fell off, okay. Light is on on the side, the blue light. Still doesn't start, okay. The power light here doesn't light up. Okay. But there's power getting in. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll take this copper thing off. Nothing's getting hot. Obviously, nothing's getting hot because there's no current going in, basically. Uh, pretty much. The uh, camera's frozen. There is actually a bit of current going in to show you guys. It's one of them days today. It definitely is one of them days today. Okay, look, there is a bit of current going in, okay? So I'll take this off, just see if I can spot any more of these little book regulator coils. I'm expecting, obviously, to find standby on one of them. Okay, and also on the connector going down to the keyboard, I should find a standby voltage. Let's just uh, disconnect that a moment. Let's see. There could be some on the other side, of course. Okay. So under here is another screw. Right. Yeah, there isn't any more. That is just the heat sink. Because it's not powering up, I'm going to take this off anyway for a moment. 
yeah, it looks like that little pad goes onto this chip here. Let's see. So, I can easier check for voltages on this now. Without that one. Again, blue light is on. Hmm, I don't need any voltage there. Maybe that isn't ground. Let's see, is this ground? Yep, 12 volts there. Okay, so what's on these various coils? Well, that one has 5 volts on, so we can say that's running. This has 0. Okay. This has... I bet that's the one for the battery, you know, just the battery isn't fitted at the moment, a bit of a strange voltage on there. Okay, this one, 3.3, so I have a 3.3 and a 5. The one that powers the CPU is probably underneath. How about on the connect to the keyboard? Yeah, so we have 3.3 there. 3.3, okay, so we have power getting up to the keyboard. Okay, I'm interested to see if this voltage here changes when I press the on button. The problem is getting to it. I was kind of thinking there might be 0 volts on the one next to it and you just short it to it, but that isn't the case. I've attached a crocodile clip lead by Black Meter Probe. This cable is going back to the power supply. Okay, so I have both that lead and the other black lead which goes to here connected to the negative on the power supply that means i've got a ground and that means i can just read the voltage okay so this end pin i'm expecting is the one that gets the signal to start the laptop running i can now reach the power button uh, i can measure the voltage on here Press the button, it goes to zero. Now the interesting thing is that the power supply also goes to zero. Huh. If I hold that button in the same amps as well, so this is getting the start signal. I'd expect the current from the power supply to go up, but it actually goes down. It doesn't necessarily mean it is going to zero. Bear in mind this only leads to a resolution of 10 milliamps. It could just be going below 10, yeah. So we can say this gets the start signal, it doesn't start. I know it doesn't start because the power supply is telling me that basically. Let's have a look to see if we can see any short circuits on these other rails. So we know we've got the 3.3 and the five, so those must be okay because we've got outputs, but we've got two more and maybe some on the other side as well. So I'll power that off, let's see. So I'm looking for the resistance from these inductors to ground. 28 ohms, seems reasonable enough. That one actually reads very high, open. This is probably the supply for the battery. It had some voltage on it anyway, so we know it's okay, basically. There's probably some more on the other side of the board. Okay. Those came off easily. Let's have a look. We have the one for the screen. No, there are no more on the other side of the board. So... We can say, I would think, that we know the battery is bad. That's for sure. It draws a bit of current and then shuts down. We can see that on the bench power supply. It powers up as far as standby without the battery attached. We have 5 volts and 3.3 volts standby. Seems perfectly good to me. But it doesn't run. 
even when we press the power button on the keyboard and we know the signal is getting back to here. So either we've got some problem with the motherboard not starting, probably something to do with the EC chip. I mean, there's no shorts on any supply rails I can see, but I can't see many supply rails on this. It surprised me a little bit. In fact, there only seems to be one low voltage supply that kind of reads 60 odd ohms. I mean, it's reasonable. Uh, so I have to make a decision, yeah? Clearly the battery has failed. So I'm gonna to say to the customer, get a new battery. There may or may not be another problem on the laptop. I would not be surprised at all to see that it works once we put the new battery on it. If it doesn't, well, there's some problem on this motherboard somewhere. And depending on what the customer wants to spend, we have to look further, yeah. But I don't see any point in looking further on here without changing that battery. I know there's no shorts that I can see in the obvious places. Okay, so I don't think that's the problem with this. If it's faulty, could be a problem with the EC, it could just be. I doubt a problem with the CPU or the RAM or anything because it doesn't even start. So that suggests a problem with the EC. But hey, you know, you can only advise so far with this. And I don't see any real need to go any further on that one until we sort the battery out. So this one's down to the customer. Also down to you guys, yeah, you and probably you as well, because you might have some other ideas. But that's my take on it, guys. That's where I am with this one. Get into the comments below. Let me know what you think. I do look forward to hearing from you and also seeing you all again soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.